Hello and welcome to part two of the screencast on classes in the Scala for the Impatient series. In this screencast, we're going to be looking at some sample code that puts classes to use. Over here, we'll see a very simple person class. Here we see the primary constructor takes two parameters. One of the parameters is a val field that's being set by the constructor, an immutable field. Uh, the other one is a var field, so this class allows us to change the name of a person. And then finally we have a method here that computes the first name by extracting a substring up to the first space. Uh, we'll just assume in, the, in this implementation that there is such a space in the name. Um, Notice that this method here takes no parentheses, so when the, uh, it's being called, we use the syntax without parentheses where it appears as if it was just a field. Let's try this out in the Scala REPL. Let's make a person object. We have to give an ID and a name. We can look at the name. Uh, we can look at the ID. We can change the name. But we can't change the ID because it's a val. So there we would get an error. Finally, let's look at the first name method. It extracts the first name. And notice that we can't call it with parentheses. Um, so it's one of those methods that was defined without parentheses. Um, so that it looks to the user of the class as if it was a field. And in fact, one could evolve the class and make it into a field if one so chose. Now let's look at a different evolution of this class. Um, let's say that we're a little bit worried about having a read-write public uh, field here, that name field. Um, and let's uh, not allow arbitrary mutations. We want to make it so that when someone assigns a new name, that the last name can change, say through marriage or divorce, but the first name should uh, stay the same. So here, uh, the way you achieve that is you redefine the name setter, um, and here's the code. If the first name as computed by the first name method is the same as the first name of the new name that comes in, then we're going to be making the assignment, and otherwise we'll just ignore uh, the call to the setter. Um, now, when we take control over the getter and setter in this way, we, we lose the automatic field. So we have to make manually a private field. Here I'll call it my name. And over here, then I'm setting the new name to the my name field. And it also means I have to now manually implement the getter. Here, the name getter just returns my name. Uh, finally, in the primary constructor, I no longer have a, a var for uh, the, the field because I've defined it now as a private field. Instead, I just get a regular parameter. And over here, that parameter is assigned to the field. So that's my class as it has evolved. Let's try that out in the REPL. Now, um, so <coughs> Here we're get, again making an object of this class. Uh, let's change the name. This name change was successful because the first name was not changed. Now let's try to change the name by changing the first name. And as you can see, that name change was ignored. Now, uh, what's the point of all of this? Over here, I named the classes 
person and person too, just for simplicity. But in real life, of course, I would have just kept the name person. I would have changed the implementation and the users of the class would have been none the wiser. The, the uh, public interface has not changed. In the old class, you used fred.name to get a Fred's name. and the new class, you used fred.name to get the name. It's just that the new class uh, has a bit of a, a safety net over here where it checks that you're not making arbitrary name changes. Um, so Scala gives you, by this ingenious use of public fields, um, which really are public setters and getters that you can redefine if you choose, it gives you a way of evolving your class um, to, to make those getters and setters smarter. So you should have no fear of using public fields because uh, you do have full control over what the getters and setters do at any time. And the third part of the screencast, we'll be looking at some design tips for how to use the various Scala features when you design your own classes.